I hereby decree that until I return, the Scarecrow, by virtue of his highly superior brains, shall rule in my stead, assisted by the Tin Man, by virtue of his magnificent heart, and the Hamster, by virtue of his courage. Obey them, as you would me. Or forget everything we just said and obey me instead, because I'm much more powerful. <laughs> oh no, it's the Wicked Witch of the West. You should be dead. Did your highly superior brains tell you that, Scarecrow? Color me impressed. So the wizard's gift wasn't completely wasted on you after all. Here's my gift for all of you. Cut. I oh, we talked about this. We're already using a rocket instead of a hot air balloon, and a giant hamster instead of a lion because we couldn't find a lion costume in adult size. For everything else, let's stick to the script. What if the script sucks though? The mutt runs away to chase some cat in the audience and the wizard's rocket takes off without me. Such a random, stupidly convenient turn of events. She's got a point. The script makes my character look like a total idiot. And for what? Just so Charmaine's Stepford Smiler Fairy can show up and reveal that Dorothy was wearing the solution to all her problems on her feet the entire time. But she couldn't mention it earlier because Dorothy had to figure it out herself. Why though? Wouldn't it make much more sense for the Wicked Witch to intervene and ruin everybody's day at the last second? It might, if not for the simple fact that, as Diyama mentioned, the Wicked Witch is supposed to be dead at this point. You know who else is dead? The High Witch of Teleportation, the one who created the original Silver Slippers, and she would turn over in her grave if she could see how poorly her invention was implemented in this story. It's just an old fairy tale, Mum. Wait, are you saying the Silver Slippers were real? Details such as their color, their material, and whether or not they were actually slippers remain topics of discussion among scholars of the magic realm till this day. Most people believe they were actually white and made of rabbit fur. But yes, it is generally accepted that teleporting shoes of some kind existed at some point, and it was one of the 13 witches who came up with the concept. So not everything about it is just a fairy tale after all. Hey, what are you doing? Oh no. It's the creepy dead pervert again. I'll be in the kitchen, brewing a ghost repellent potion. But... Oh well, never mind. Since it looks like we're officially done filming for today, could someone please turn me back? Thank you. Excuse me, I have another appointment in... Oh, less than 10 minutes. Call me if you'd like to reshoot that last scene. Did I miss anything? Is this the dress code for the party, Wizard of Oz characters? There is no dress code. Mum will put on an autumn-related costume, but guests are allowed to wear whatever they like. She just doesn't know yet that you and your family will be among the guests. And our little film here has nothing to do with that. Lev just had the idea to make a new video starring him and me and put it on YouTube to distract people from our communal shower sex tape that has been giving us nothing but trouble lately. The witch hunters haven't been active in an entire month, so we finally have some time to waste on nonsensical projects like this. How foolish to believe that anything could ever make the internet forget about that sex tape. So Saturday still stands? Sure. Mum will question it because her birthday is only on Sunday, but your daughter's is on Friday, so Saturday is a good compromise. We'll think of something to tell her. And now piss off before she throws that ghost repellent potion at you, because she's still not over you trying to ask her out. I wasn't trying anything of the sort. There's just something important I have to tell her. It's the very reason I want her and Evangelina to celebrate their birthdays together, now that they're turning 60 and 40, respectively. Hey, Tiyamo, Will Bicker. Your mother wants to know if the creepy dead pervert is molesting you. There we go. Okay, I'm leaving. See you on Saturday. And now the news. The reopening and reorientation of Studio Donna is slowly coming to fruition, as it has managed to attract the attention of famous fashion icon, Big D. Aya, there's a TV report about the guy who designed your new handbag. Good for him. But I bought that handbag because it's pretty and practical, not because I care about the person behind it. Today the designer of the very popular Anita handbags is taking some time out to visit Windenburg's very own arts center for women and talk about her newest collections. Big D is a woman. I was certain that only a man would choose a name like that. Why? What does Big D usually stand for? Oh Lev, it never fails to astonish me how you manage to be so dirty-minded and so innocent at the same time. 
As Studio Donna's official spokesperson, I had the honor to conduct an exclusive interview with one of the most influential fashion designers of the year. Thank you for coming, Big D. My pleasure, Charmaine. Thanks for the invitation. How did Charmaine get there so quickly? She's a vampire grande. They travel fast, and she was probably wearing this outfit in her human form the entire time. And there's Nate's girlfriend in the background. I didn't realize Esper was such a fan. Well, with her love for knitting, she's kind of a fashion designer herself. Can you tell us more about the inspiration and motivation behind the creation of your beautiful Anita handbags? I was always a fan of the Seasons brand growing up, and still am to this very day. I mean who isn't? Everybody wears it, and even those who don't have at least heard of it. Your outfit is Seasons too. True. And why not? The brand provides shirts and jackets, pants and skirts, shoes, suits and dresses for every time of the year. The one thing it has always neglected though, is handbags, and accessories in general. That's where I come in. I never liked the Seasons brand. It's way overhyped, just like Big D, so they really do complement each other. Too fancy for you, or not fancy enough. How about old-fashioned and boring? Those handbags look like something our grandmother would have carried around. I'd call them timeless. Old trends always come back into fashion eventually. Yeah. Ask the grumpy crone in the Henford marketplace who pummels people for public displays of affection using that very handbag. It looks fine on her, but can you imagine my 16-year-old daughter with it? Lumi certainly isn't the type. Excuse me for a second. Can I switch to Netflix? I found an interesting show that I think you might like too. Of course, you little streaming junkie. Catalin, we have a problem. The Anita we got your wife for her birthday? She hates it. What? But you said... I was wrong. You know how unpredictable she can be at times. We have to get her something else. Maybe a laptop to replace her ancient typewriter? Well the biggest surprise is going to be the joint celebration with the Moninis, one that she probably won't like. Did your father at least tell you why? No, looks like that's going to be a big surprise for all of us. Just three more days. Tiyamo help. I don't fit into my pirate costume anymore. What am I supposed to do about that? Use magic to make the clothes bigger, or my belly smaller. I prefer the second option. Too bad it's not the kind of belly that you can easily get rid of. Right Loki? Is anyone else worried about Leviathan? He's been unusually quiet lately, less keen on fucking and his morning jogs, and now he thinks he's gaining weight, but I didn't notice anything. You will eventually. In fact, you'll be amazed at how much weight he'll gain within the next 7 months. It might be stress induced. The witch hunters didn't go easy on him when they had us captured at the old silver mine in Port Promise. Experiences like that leave a mark. You think that's the reason? And you know very well that it isn't, so just drop the innocent act and tell them the truth already. Leviathan is strong. He'll get over it, and I'm sure tonight's party will lighten up his mood. Speaking of which, I should go now, because I promised to pick up some of our guests. Take your time. Mum told everybody when to come to All Hag's Cemetery, but that doesn't mean she herself will be ready by then. Well we are ready. Should we go ahead and see if the guests your mother doesn't know about have arrived yet? Good idea. Let me just get my present. My present for all of you is knowledge. But I can't share, because I can't speak. Sucks to be the only one who's paying attention. I really don't see what the problem is. You fit into the costume perfectly. And you look the same as usual. So you're saying I've always been fat? No. Which means I need bigger clothes. Because we're going to a birthday party tonight, the Popescus will be there, and Stel Maria told me her sister is a journalist for some kind of gossip rag in the magic realm. What if she writes an unflattering article about my physique? You're not fat Lev, no one is going to write an article about that, and even if they did, since when do you care what others think? Body shaming is for losers anyway, and as I said, your costume fits you perfectly. Now let's see how mum is doing with hers. Loki bitch and I are going ahead. Don't make your guests wait too long mum. I won't. Just five more minutes. Those were the longest five minutes of my life. But now the party can begin. Leviathan, I'm going to need proper autumn weather for my grand entrance.
Wilbiko was right, Aya is taking her sweet time. Everything okay Espa? You don't look like you're enjoying the party. I'm not sure I really belong here. I'm friends with Wilbika, but barely know her mother, and I don't know those people at all. Me neither, but unlike them, we were actually invited by Aya, so I wouldn't worry too much. After all, you're fledgling, I'm a pleach freak, and if she has nicknames for us, she probably likes us, in her very own strange way. But she also likes playing magical tricks on people. What if she only invited us to have more targets? That is definitely a possibility. Here she comes. Kneel down, underlings, the Queen of Autumn has arrived. What are they doing here? See? It's not just your birthday, but my mother's too. We're celebrating together. Isn't that great? No, it's awful. Whose stupid idea was that? I thought you'd warm up to them a little after Stel Maria and Catalin helped me get rid of the Wraith disease. You'll feel better after blowing out the candles, oh great Queen of Autumn. Charmaine made the cake, and we're all curious to find out how it tastes. Start without me. I really have to pee. You made this Charmaine? I didn't realize vampires liked cake. This one is an exception. My own secret recipe, a zombie cake with plasma fruit and other ingredients that both vampires and non-vampires can enjoy. And dogs too. Don't forget the dogs. Happy 60th birthday, Mum. Oh look, another candle. A coconut scented one. Finn made it, I only added a spell. You should light it right away to find out what it does. Open mine next. Uff, that smell. I wish they wouldn't light scented candles here. Or at all. You don't like the scent of coconut? I used to, because it reminds me of home. But now, for some reason, I hate it. It makes me feel sick. Perhaps you are indeed sick. Anything else you're feeling? Bloated and tired and weirdly emotional. And I need to go to the toilet way more often than usual. That sounds too familiar. Say, have you been in contact with aliens lately? Other than my daughter that is. She wouldn't just impregnate you without your consent. Impreg what? That was to be expected. Is the truth finally coming out now? Your costume may protect you from prying eyes, but not from my sharp teeth. What leads you here, Lorenzo? Get lost, bitch. This has nothing to do with you. It's my wife's birthday, and I brought her a present, that's all. Without any ulterior motives, I assume. It's nothing nasty, if that's what you're worried about. Why would I want to make Aya unhappy on her birthday? Because your mere existence makes her unhappy on every other day of the year, too. Today is no such day. There's only one person in that room that I have a bone to pick with, and that's Loki. What's your problem with Loki? Is it the competition you don't like? Well, being a chess master seems to run in the blood. But you wouldn't want to cut down your own family tree, would you? What's that supposed to mean? Loki is your grandson from the future. Tiamo is the father, and the Merman Leviathan is the mother so to speak, accidentally impregnated while he was a woman. This means that both Leviathan and Loki are part of the family now, and I am their familiar, so to get to them, you'll have to get past me first. Bitch, I don't know what they put in your food today, but you're not making any sense. You know what wouldn't make sense, if I was making this up? Loki using a guardian charm to find Leviathan without the latter's blood. Impossible. Exactly, unless they're closely related, and Loki used a modified sample of his own blood. And last month, he turned into a ghost around the time Leviathan was being mistreated by witch hunters. I bet my Technicolor asked that, if Leviathan had died that day, Loki would have faded out of existence. But... Oh. Hi bitch. What are you doing out here in the rain? Better go inside and comfort Leviathan. 
He just discovered a shocking truth about himself that he's not ready to share with anyone yet. But I think he's going to be fine. And I'm certain of it. The transparency of Loki's body is currently a pretty good indicator of how fine Leviathan is going to be, and he was still fully visible when I left. Now excuse me, I have to go get our special guest for tonight. This will be a huge surprise for both birthday girls, so don't tell anyone, okay? I couldn't tell anyone, even if I knew what you're up to. Are you trying to mock me, you mischievous floating bowl of ectoplasm? Attention please. It's time for the birthday girls to give their speeches. Speeches? What speeches? No one told me anything about that. And no one told me I'd have to see your mug today, but shit happens. You go ahead then. I still have to think about something to say. But I don't know what to say either. Perhaps you could start by explaining your outfit choice. If you insist. <gasps> hey, is this another present for mum? So, my outfit choice. Alright. Why am I dressed as the Queen of Autumn? Well, not only was I born in this season, but it kept playing an important part throughout my life. My ex-husband was born in October, and lost both his parents shortly before his 18th birthday. My own mother abandoned me and my father in early September 41 years ago, around the same time I stumbled upon the magic realm and became a witch nine years later. And I still have high hopes that my son and his fiancée will get married this year in November. No, don't listen to her. I'm not even engaged. One might say that many major events in my life, or the lives of people close to me, happened in autumn. And I suppose this isn't the case for Evangelina, because she isn't wearing anything autumn related. Perhaps she'd like to explain her boring outfit choice next. Thank you for your attention. And thank you so much for your kind words, Aya. Whoever came up with the idea to make us celebrate our birthdays together, prepare to get murdered later today. <laughs> Is that for me? My original plan was to spend my 40th birthday at home within the family circle, with no guests whatsoever, because it's no big deal to me. In fact, I hate my birthday, and now that you're all here, I might as well tell you why. I didn't realize this until now, but Aya and I have something in common. We were both abandoned by our mothers. In my case, she left the family so early that I barely even remember her. It was just me and my father until, shortly before my 10th birthday, he was kidnapped by aliens and returned pregnant with my half-sister. T. Yamo. There's something I need to tell you. Stelmaria never got to meet her mother at all. Well, unless you count my father as her mother, because technically, he was the one who popped her out. I doubt anyone is that interested in the details. You're what? Anyway. My mother probably doesn't care how I feel about her, otherwise she wouldn't have left. I never forgave her for that. But at the end of the day, she's still the woman who gave birth to me, and that's why I don't like my birthday. It only serves as a reminder of the family I've lost, and the normal family life I never had, for being one parent short. Huh, now you have to get married after all. I'm already married. My husband is sitting over there with my two children. I wasn't talking to you. Go on. Perhaps we should discuss this later. Grandpa, where have you been? You just missed mom's birthday speech. There was some important business I had to attend to. Evangelina, Aya, I have yet another present for you. Are you ready? As long as you don't ask me out again. This again? party people who is that that's big d the fashion designer oh my god calm down you already met her a few days ago at studio donna but i never got an opportunity to talk to her that's the present but why we've already established that evangelina doesn't like big d's fashion she's more than just any fashion designer she's also someone's mother what the fuck? Give me a break. Precisely. 
She's your mother Aya, and yours too, Evangelina. That's the secret I've been keeping for more than 40 years, and the reason I wanted you to celebrate your birthdays together. Your half-sisters. You can't be serious. Listen, I'm sorry I abandoned you back then. Both of you. But that's why I'm here now. I'd like to make it up to you, if you give me the chance. Well guess what? You're too late. Fuck you. That was a rather unexpected turn of events. So many curious secrets in this family. Maybe instead of a new version of The Wizard of Oz that nobody asked for, we should be making a YouTube series about ourselves.